Okay, in this problem we are asked to find the local max and the local min of, uh, of an original function, but we weren't told the original function. We were actually only told what the first derivative was. We can probably figure it out what the original function is. But let me just write this down. We're asked to find the local min and the local max right, of, of the original function given what the first derivative is it's 2 sine, and its argument is a double angle here, 2x. Uh, but we're asked to look for all the values of x in this closed interval between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi. Um, now, if you remember from your calculus, um, these square brackets here in interval notation means that it includes these, uh, these two values here. These are our endpoints. But local max and local mins do not exist at endpoints. Right? They only exist on the interior. Uh, I'm going to do it here in parentheses on the interior of an interval. So we're not going to include negative two pi and two pi. Um, I mentioned a moment ago we could probably figure out what the uh, original function is. That probably wouldn't be too bad. Maybe we should do that real quick here. You know, if this is our first derivative, our original function must have been a cosine because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, but since this is a positive value, then it must have been a negative cosine instead of a positive cosine, right? Does that make sense? In other words, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but since there is no negative in this first derivative, then the negative from the derivative and the negative from the original function cancel each other out. And the argument must also be 2x because if you take the chain rule, the 2x stays exactly as is for the cosine function, but the derivative of the interior will get you back to that 2 right there. All right, so anyways, that's what the original function looks like, not what we're after right now. We're after, hey, what are all the x values that would fall inside of this interval here, not including the endpoints? Well, let's start with this. We know, let me back this up just a little bit so you can see a little bit more here. We know where sine is equal to 0. Because, you know, if you take the first derivative and you set that first derivative equal to 0, as I'll do right here, um, and then solve this for x, that will give us all of the critical values. And the critical values are potential local mins and local maxes. We know that. So I can divide both sides by 2 here in this equation and simply get um, the sine of 2x is equal to 0. And I think the easiest way to think this through is to ask yourself, hey, in, w in what cases is sine equal to 0? The sine of what angle here? Let me do it this way. The sine of what angle is equal to 0? That's what we're after. Right? We want to know what are these angles here. Well, there are two scenarios, and then it kind of iterates over and over again. For example, <coughs> we know that the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of pi over two is one, so we're not going to we're not going to deal with that one. Uh, the sine of pi is also zero, right? So it's zero here and it's zero here. And uh, let's see, the sine of three pi over two is a negative one, so we're not dealing with that one either. So here are all the cases where sine is zero. Sine is zero at zero. Do them over here, I guess. And if I keep spinning around here, it's also 0 at pi. If I keep spinning around here, I return back to the origin here, or I come full circle, which is 2 pi. If I kept going around, that's 3 pi. And if I keep spinning around, that's 4 pi, etc., etc. So here are all the cases where sine is 0. Let me do just a couple more. Let me just do maybe 5 pi and well, actually, I'll just stop right there. Okay, so if we keep spinning around, every, every, every half turn, rather, is, is where sine is equal to 0. Um, but that's not what x is. That's what our argument 2x is. See, our argument right here is 2x. So what I can do is I can take each of these and set it equal to 2x. And I'm going to show you something here in just a second. Just write all these 2x's down. What if the argument was 3x, you know, or 5x, or something like that, and it's still the sine of what angle is equal to 0? I could just take my 3x and set it equal to 0. In each of these cases, each of these would be a 3x, or each of these would be a 5x, 
um, and set equal to all of these angle values over here. And then what we're going to do for each of these cases is we're going to solve for x, no problem. So if you divide both sides by 2, you get x is equal to 0. If you divide both sides by 2 here, you get x is equal to pi over 2. Or here, x is equal to just pi, I hope you see. And here, x is equal to 3 pi over 2. Uh, if you divide both sides by 2 here, you get x is equal to 2 pi. Um, just for yucks, I'm going to go one more here. If, if, if you did this one, it would be x is equal to 5 pi over 2. But I want you to notice that I'm going to stop right here. Anything past this point right here, aren't these values outside of my range? Look, 5 pi over 2 is way past my 2 pi that I was originally given the, uh, the as the upper limit. So I'm going to stop here. And in fact, I'm even going to stop right here because this value here, this 2 pi, is an endpoint. Right? That 2 pi, that positive 2 pi there is an endpoint. And we just said a moment ago that we're not going to deal with the endpoints. We're only looking in the interior of this interval. That's where local max and local mins exist. So here we have all of the values where x is equal to an angle that if we plug it back in uh, to our first derivative would give us a 0 as a, as a result. Um, now, I only did um, the positive values, including 0, in this interval between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. Um, so I hope you understand that not only are these my x values, but they're negatives as well. Um, obviously, 0 doesn't have a negative. but it also includes negative pi over 2, and it also includes negative pi, and it also includes negative 3 pi over 2. So picture-wise, let me just show you something picture-wise that's going on here, and then I'll wrap up this video. <coughs> All right, picture-wise, I hope you see, and this is going to be really rough here, okay? <coughs> we know that in general, these things here. This is negative 1. We know that in general the sine function looks like this, right? The sine function starts off here in the origin. It rises to 1. Um, you know, half of its period is at pi and then it dips down and, and it does something like this. So that's really rough, roughly drawn there. But we know that um, this is, you know, what I'm going to do in black here is just simply sine of x, okay? But our first derivative, if you remember, our first derivative was the sine of 2x, which means that um, the frequency within that given period between 0 and 2 pi has doubled. So it repeats itself twice. That's what that 2x really means. By the way, this amplitude of 2 just means it reaches a height of 2 instead of 1. But I, I'm going to draw it this way, if you will. This is what the first derivative looks like. Or maybe I should put the 2 up here negative 2 down below, but th you get the idea here. What it really means is within half of the original period, we have the full, right, we have the full sine wave, and then it repeats itself. So there are two of them, and that's what I'll do here in red. I'll do this as sine, you know, this is 2 sine 2x, two right? So what's going on? What I just drew in red is what this first derivative is. And I hope you see that it crosses through, and again, this is really rudimentary here. This is really kind of rough. But it crosses through the x-axis, and it hits those zeros in the exact spots that I just picked on. It, it crosses through at 0. This is pi over 2. That's pi. And that's 3 pi over 2, as well as 2 pi. But remember, we said we're not going to include the endpoints here. So here they are, again, not only in equation form, Right here are all the x values, but here it is graphically as well. There's 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And again, we're not including the endpoints. So let me just show you one more thing. And of course, this, this pic, you know, picture-wise, this, this, this uh, continues on here. Right? It kind of does this as well on the other side. But, um, but let me just point something out to you. Any time that the first derivative, and remember what I have in red here is a first derivative, is above the x-axis, it's positive. And when it dips down below the x-axis, 
we have a negative slope, positive slope, negative slope. So when the first derivative changes from positive to a negative, that's what tells us where we have um, the changes from a positive going uphill down to a, to a negative going downhill. That's where we have a local max. Right? This is also a local max because it went from positive changing to a negative. Where it changes from negative up to a positive, that's where you have a local min. So this is a min, and this is also a min. I know that's a lot of uh, x's and arrows there in this picture, but I hope you can understand that we have maxes at these points here, at uh, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, and we have mins at 0 and pi. Um, again, these are only the positive values. The same thing is happening over here. Um, negative pi over 2 is considered a local max. Uh, negative pi is considered a local min. And negative 3 pi over 2 is considered a local max. Again, we're not including the endpoints. So the only difference that I just did here between what I'm showing you now and maybe say something like this, if you had a, a triple angle, something like that, is that you would take 3x and set it equal to 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. Just keep going. 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi. Just go as far as you need to until you start realizing that you are no longer within the given limits of, uh, of the problem. And so you can, you can use this. Uh, you can use this right here over and over and over again. And again, this continues on you know, to 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi. Um, <coughs> so that's kind of an easy way, at least I think a visual way, of saying, hey, where are all the cases where sine is 0? It's 0 at 0. It's 0 at pi, at 2 pi, at 3 pi, at 4 pi, at 5 pi, etc. And then set your argument for sine, set your argument for the first derivative. In this case, it was a 2x equal to each of these values where sine is 0 and solve for x, you'll end up with your x uh, values within a given interval. Hope that helps.